Hello, this is Jordan. This video is being recorded on the afternoon of Wednesday, October 26th. Thank you so much for joining me. In this video, I am going to talk about the current inversion, at least in the last 24 hours. I don't know where it technically closed today, but the 10-year yield and the three-month yield inverted, and that yield spread, that is the Fed's uh, the one that they prefer. That's the one that they really look at. Of course, they look at the two-year and the 10-year and that spread, but it has been said that the three-month and 10-year, uh, the spread between those two, uh, that that's their preferred metric for the yield curve. That has inverted. And if we go back and look at, this is just a chart of the last 30 years or 35 years or so. If we look at uh, the... Um, Let's go back the last 55 years. So after the mid-1960s, uh, this yield spread is 8 for 8 in predicting recessions. Uh, this is the ninth one that we're seeing. Um, odds are it's probably going to be 9 for 9. I wouldn't want to bet against that. And the issue is really one of timing with respect to when are we going to see the recession and I'll, I'll get a little bit into like why that's significant. I mean, obviously it's significant, but why that is with respect to the market in the next chart. But here's the important data, you know, looking at some data from uh, Barry Bannister, who's probably my favorite strategist out there. Don't agree with him all the time, but I think he's on point, at least with respect to where the markets are going, the overlying macro and that sort of thing. I mean, to me, um, I followed him off and on for, 15 years or so, he's been on point with all the major turns. He now thinks we're in a secular bear market for the S&P, although he's not calling it a secular bear. I don't, maybe he said that. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but according to his data, and I think this is probably looking at the last, uh, yeah, it is looking at the last eight uh, recessions and these yield curve inversions between the, the three month and the 10 year the average lag between the inversion and the recession is nine months. Uh, the median of, of all those is eight months. And then there's a deviation, I think, of about uh, three and a half years or so. So if we look at all these instances, you can really have anywhere from uh, the recession happens, I think, um, as early as four to six months uh, after the inversion or as late. It can be you know, 12, 13, even 14 months after. So there's quite a spread there. Uh, so that's what we know. Um, what that data would tell us, um, if we're looking at the um, uh, median or the average, uh, so that tells us that at least based on that, the recession would start at the beginning of next summer. That's by looking at the average. I think there's a good chance it probably starts before then. I mean, the, the economy's already been weak. The markets have already been weak. The Fed's been hiking for a while. I mean, you have all these all these reasons uh, why it could start before then. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, the labor market has started to weaken. Um, so those are all factors to consider. Um, here, these this is the performance of... The S and P 500. It's inflation adjusted. I wish it would. He would just show it nominally. Uh, this is from Barry Bannister. Uh, the blue is recessions from 1949 to 1980. The red is 1982 to 2020. And you know, looking at both the blue and the red, um, you can see with the red there was a rally um, about four months before the recession started, you had a rally for a couple months there. Uh, the same thing can be said in the blue 1949 to 1980. There was a rally uh, the two months before a recession was declared. So then the question becomes, when is this recession going to be declared? Obviously, we have no idea. Maybe it gets declared in the next couple months. Maybe it's uh, well in, in the next couple months, that would be early next year. So may, maybe sometime this winter, uh, if not, maybe it's a little later next spring. Um, but, you know, looking at the rally, because I, I want to talk about the stock market and, and just this comment, and I'll try not to babble on or this analysis, I should say, uh, because I, I'll put this in, an, in a, another video in the near future. 
But if we're looking at historically these mega bear markets, these six mega bear markets, and we've been tracking the analog because they all follow a pattern, we are at the point where uh, the market could rally for a couple months or so. Uh, but then after that rally, if that rally fails, that's the point when you get a really sharp sell-off or the bear market can really accelerate to the downside. Now, that's important because that acceleration to the downside, that is going to coincide with the recession. So now based on this, you know, based on the history here, uh, that would that would seem to say that the recession is not going to be declared uh not in the next couple months, but at the earliest, you know, maybe in four or five months, uh, which would put us, uh, you know, February or March of next year. So, you know, markets always lead. So may maybe early next year, uh, the market rolls over in anticipation of recession. So where we are here and now, I mean, the S and P, maybe it could rally for another two months or a little bit longer. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about in premium analysis, I have some potential upside targets there. Look at the 200 day moving average. That's a target. Maybe it can rally a little bit above there. Um, but uh, so, so this inversion is important, you know, as we've been saying, because this inversion in the last 55 years, 100, 100% track record, <coughs> excuse me, 100% track record. And then there's the math here, which shows it can be the recession can come for as early as four or five months after that, or as late as 12, 13, 14 months after that. And again, this sets up, we're looking at that bear market template of these six mega bear markets. If the recession, if it's going to happen, as I said, you know, early next year, uh, then there is a real severe risk of that accelerated downside move in the stock market at the beginning of next year. Obviously it's not a risk right now or this month, this next month or two, uh, because we're probably going to rally and, and hold for a little while. Uh, you know, so technically there isn't that risk yet, but if we see, uh, this risk play out, you have a recession, uh, at the end of the, you know, it becomes clear by the end of the winter, early spring, you're going to see the market fall off, start to fall off a couple months before that happens. And the setup is there for an accelerated uh, decline, accelerated downside. That is when you're going to get um, rate cuts, when the Fed is going to have to ease. It's clear. And, you know, the yield curve, you know, you'll see that in the bond market. We haven't seen the major turn yet. I mean, that's a whole nother video. Uh, but that's the point when the Fed is going to have to ease. So if we're looking at all these factors, it looks like it's just going to be a matter of time. And the Fed is probably going to have to cut rates in the first half of next year. Uh, so, who you know, the pivot will probably come by the end of the year. I mean, I've been wrong about that. I was expecting it way too soon. Um, but all these factors are lining up for precious metals. We're not quite there yet. Uh, but at the same time, these factors are lining up. And if you look at the stocks, uh, they, they are, I mean, they're, they've traced out a potential significant bottoming pattern and you could see more upside here in the very short term. Thanks for listening and watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video.